Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We've having people bring us all kinds of cool stuff. This one belongs to us. This one a gentleman has brought us. This is from Myrtle Beach, one of the old Pigeon Bat games. This is a comet one of our buddies brought us. And then someone popped up with this. Would you check this out? This is a Bally Matahari pinball machine. Legendary game. If you've never heard of it, you're going to love it. This was the first solid state game I ever owned. Not this exact one, but one just like it. Um, I, I had two EMs that I bought, and I fixed one of them. One of them I couldn't fix. And the one that I fixed, to be honest with you, I only halfway fixed. But it could play. Uh, and then I got this one in. And I had this one for a while. This is a very fun game. But it could just be because, you know, I'm nostalgic for it. But great theme. Great look. Uh, very cool. The Matahari, as I understand it, was a double agent back in the day. So this chick on the back glass, that is the Matahari. And so she was, uh, I don't know if, I guess it was World War I, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not a historian, people. If I get this wrong, just deal with it. I'm sure there will be plenty of people down in the comments that will leave the whole story. But basically, uh, she was, uh, uh, what's the word? fraternizing <laughs> with German troops and, uh, was it French troops? So maybe it was World War II. I don't know. Anyway, look it all up. There's no video of her, I don't think, so that would make it World War I, probably. But, um, she was a, she was a femme fatale. I don't think she killed anybody, but she was getting info, passing info back and forth. From what I understand, she was a double-double agent that did a double back turn on them. She double. She was a double backstabber. Um, but so they made this game at some point about her. I guess it was 1978 or so. Bally and uh, made a beautiful back glass uh, with the beautiful woman on it. And just it's a fun game. It's very well designed, very well laid out. Now these are old games, you know, so they're all kind of simple. But you had eight drop targets in two nice little banks right there. Um, you had four. Uh, pop bumpers and two of them are about halfway concealed so you can only hit them kind of from that one side and then you have these nice two loops on the outside that are really nice shots right and then you had Bally's ever-present saucer up there in the top it's like every game they did had that saucer on it um, well not every game I just looked at another one across the room and it doesn't have it but about half of their games <laughs> had that saucer on it um, this particular one the Playfield has had Mylar put on it. Now, this game was bad about getting wear because they played the hell out of this thing. <laughs> it was one of the first solid states. And uh, they even this was one of those games that they also made an EM of. Um, so, you know, we're talking early digital games, so people were ready for it. And they played it, played it, played it, played it. This particular one, the back glass, is in excellent shape. To the point it almost looks like a reproduction, but it's too nice to be a reproduction, I think. That looks like an original glass to me. I'll bet when we pop that thing off, that sucker is just a near-mint original. When I had mine, it was all messed up. The, the, the lady looked like she had leprosy. So she's got a little map here. Right? And it says, The Secret Map Baron. Very cool. And there's snakes around to show you her true nature. Don't trust her. She's a double, double backstabbing agent. Now there is something about the knife. Okay, let's see. There's something written on this knife. Let's see if this is the one. One of these is a rare one because they didn't like what was written on this knife. I'll have to look it up. I'll have to look it up in a later video, but by then y'all will... See, I, I film these videos ahead of time, and then I put them out. And then on the first video... See, this is like a little adventure for me. On the first video, everybody will tell me everything that I'm going to say on the third video that I filmed a month ago. And whenever I say it on the third video, they go, Uh-huh. Taught him everything he knows. Okay, so the cabinet is also in pretty good shape. A little wear here and there. Look at this wear here, people. 
the only way to get that is if 10,000 maniacs stand there and play that thing. You can't fake that. That's a love rub where they done took the paint off. On the front, they have removed the coin door uh, insert panels and put, in, put some kind of shelf paper or something over it and there's a button. Now why would they do that? It's because the operators hated the idea that they would sell you a pinball machine and then you would operate the thing um, as their competition. So to keep that from happening, they would remove all the coin door stuff. And we'd get game after game after game after game like that. Um, we have a an EM over here. This is a complete different customer's EM from a completely different place. And uh, they have done the same thing. Everything's been removed from the coin door. So it's just, it's a, it's a very common thing that operators did because they thought if they sold you a game with all of the uh, coin stuff in it, that you'd just go make money with it and be their competition, and they didn't like that. So they would uh, rig them up to where they were permanently on free play and then sell it to you for your home. And if you tell customers that, depending on how you tell them, they think it's an upgrade. <laughs> so you go, you know what we've done too? We've upgraded the coin door so you don't actually have to pay for it. You can play this game for free if it's in your home. That's right, ma'am. For the low cost of $1,895, you can have one that won't cost you a dime to play. What do you think about that? You can play it any time of day, any time of night. Boy, I would have been good at that stuff. Remember, folks, I would never lie to make you buy. Okay. So anyway, this one, the back glass is in fantastic shape. The, but like I said, they played the crap out of it. So the play field does have some wear on it. However, they have put mylar on it. Okay, so we don't, we've got the glass on. We're about to do the play field on this video, so you'll see it. But um, you can see some splotchiness on the, well, I'm trying to let the light in it but not <laughs> reflect off the glass. I might have to remove the glass. I don't have the key for it, though. Joe's got it. Um, but you can see that there has been mylar added over parts of the play field, which means we can't fix the parts that are under the mylar. Because if you remove the mylar on a play field that's worn, it will remove the paint, make a big mess. So look at the condition of that paint. Do you see how there are pieces that have completely flaked off and then it's cracked and it's right? Well, it has a big Mylar sticker on top of it right now. And I get infinite numbers of people saying, oh, you can remove Mylar, you heat it up or you freeze it. Yes, you can remove Mylar on a nice play field that came from the factory with Mylar. But one like this that had damage and then they put mylar over the damage, you can't remove that without making a big freaking mess. You're going to rip all that paint off if you do that. So we're not going to be removing the mylar. We're just going to clean it up, make it look as good as we can. There's a significant piece there. That whole piece, that whole thing is a piece. Um, but even though it has some mylar and even though it had some wear, they put the mylar on before it got too bad. So, I mean, it is, it's there, but it's not so bad that it's ruined the game. It's, it's definitely presentable the way it is. Look at her. Look at her. Boy, she looks like she's about to get some people in some trouble. So, uh, this is the famous Matahari pinball machine. Like I said, it's a fantastic game. So we're going to be doing a few videos where we fix it up for this customer. But the first thing we're going to do is clean up the play field a little bit. Okay? So I'm going to have Joe take it all apart, uh, clean it, tear it down, wax everything, put all new rubber rings on it, and get this sucker looking good. Uh, and then we'll see what we need to do electronically in the back box. Hey, Joe! Get the tripod!
it, folks. Joe has been hard at work, hardly working, working hard. It's one of them. Well, Joe, what did you run into? Not much. It wasn't no much I could do. This was at once mile it has the mower. I was trying to show them that, but the light was getting on it. But now that we got the glass off, I can show them. So they have put a plastic piece over it so that it won't get any worse. But that means you can't clean under it. Why don't you just rip it off, Joe, with a uh, freeze spray? He can do that if he wants to, but I'm not, <laughs> not going to get him The guy just wanted to flip the ball around. He, didn't. he, he wanted it to, to play, people. He's not that concerned about whether or not it has Mylar on it. It's a very cool game. The saucer up here looks nice. Looks like you got all the lights working. Well, we got to do something with this because it's... Oh, yeah. The plastic's broken. I may know where there's another plastic. That'd be good. Um, yeah, it came out pretty nice, Joe. I like it. Yeah. Oh, we also swapped the one drop target. He had a blue star or something, or was it a, a, a blue bullseye? So we put a red bullseye in. So they at least all are the same thing now. <laughs> We put another used one in that's that's uh, equally weathered as the other ones were. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it came out nice, Joe. Pretty good. So uh, I think it, it's ready to uh, play. So we're going to do a video where we work on the electronics. As you can see, we've already got it up and running. That's because we already started the other video. But you'll have to check that out next time. So leave your comments down below. Let us know what you think so far. And uh, make sure to check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. We have a parts page on our website where we uh, show some of the things that we use uh, when we do our repairs like wax and things like that. And we have links there where you can buy them. Uh, most of them are on Amazon. We also have like our t-shirts and stuff like that. If you follow a link to Amazon and buy something on Amazon, it gives us a tip because we sent you there. So uh, uh, we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And last but not least, don't forget to check out my brother Donnie. So our brother has a channel here on YouTube where we do video games, pinball machines, jukeboxes. He does old buildings, old vehicles, things like that. I'm over there with him on the channel a lot, so go check that out. But uh, we're going to get into the electronics of this thing, and uh, we'll see you on the next video so you can take care of that. Check that out yourself.